Member for Langley Aldergrove. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm here to talk about the government's proposal to amend the uh, criminal code to uh, criminalize certain behavior that uh, I believe most Canadians already thought was against the law. But before I get into talking about uh, Bill C-3, I want to take the uh, opportunity to thank the fine people of Langley Aldergrove for endorsing me for a second term. It's a great honor to have been uh, re-elected, uh, and I've promised them that I will be a clear voice for them in this Parliament. I want to thank my wife Inga and my extended family for uh, the ongoing support and all the many, many volunteers that helped me through the campaign and made my success a reality. Politics is a team sport. So moving on to Bill C-3, uh, which is an act uh, to amend the Criminal Code and the Canada Labour Code. I'm going to focus on the Criminal Code aspect of that, uh, and it will make harassing health care workers illegal if the intent is to prevent them from doing the work of serving the public. So, as I said, many people think that this is already against the law, uh, and there are provisions in the criminal code that uh, the police and prosecutors could rely on uh, to prevent this type of um, antisocial behavior. Uh, but one thing that we have learned through the pandemic, and that is that we must value our health care workers. They are an essential part of the fully proper functioning of our society, of our communities. We owe them a debt of gratitude. Everybody in this house knows a health care worker or is related to somebody uh, who is a frontline health care worker or, um, or is a neighbor to one. Uh, I have two family members, a daughter and a daughter-in-law. One is, uh, is a care aide in a senior's home and another is a nurse in a hospital. Uh, every day they go to work, they're eager and happy to serve their uh, patients to the best of their abilities, sometimes in very stressful situations, sometimes in situations of understaffing or having to be moved from one ward to another on pretty short notice, T sometimes on having to work extended shifts because of a shortage of healthcare workers. Sometimes they have to work in, in COVID code, uh, uh, in the COVID ward. I think not only of the healthcare workers, but also their family members who share in the risks and the stresses and strains in healthcare. So this law is a step in the right direction. It is a gesture in support of our healthcare workers. But Madam Speaker, a real more constructive and substantive way to uh, support our healthcare workers is by hiring more nurses. The shortage of nurses is a long-term problem that we've known about a lo uh, long before the, the COVID pandemic, but it's been exacerbated by that. Uh, I, have a, I met with um, members of the Canadian Nurses Union, and uh, I have a quote here from uh, their publication. They state, many risk factors for burnout have been exacerbated during the pandemic, including increased patient uh, acuity, understaffing, increased overtime, reassignment to unfamiliar roles. Uh, it goes on to say that prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, severe burnout was typically found in 20 to 40% of healthcare workers. In spring of 2020, that is at the commencement of the uh, pandemic, that increased to 30 to 40%. And by the spring of 2021, a year ago, that was more like 60%. They go on to say that job vacancies for registered nurses have the largest increase of all occupations over a two year period. So this is what's happening to our healthcare workers. There's a shortage of them, and that shortage is increasing stresses and strains. So, Madam Speaker, the best thing that we could do for our healthcare workers is to hire more healthcare workers. I asked the, the people with whom I met whether there is a, a shortage of people who want to be in the nursing industry, and I'm told, no, absolutely no. There are many, many applications to universities and to nursing schools across the country but not enough seats in these nursing schools. I'm thinking of Trinity Western University in my riding, uh, whose nursing school has a very good reputation across the country, around the world. Uh, they would love to open up more chairs. There's uh, nursing schools around the world. That's what we need to do. We need to increase the supply of nurses. Now back to uh, C3. I'm happy to see you know, listening to the debate that there seems to be a consensus developing that we are all in support of this. 
I'm happy to hear that, that we want to support our healthcare workers, but I'm hoping that there's also a consensus forming around the right of protest. This is a long-standing democratic right in our society, the right freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, freedom to protest, but it needs to be done in a balanced way. No rights under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms are absolute. They are always subject to such reasonable limitations as defined in law and as demonstrably justifiable in a free and democratic society. So the question for the committee will be to determine whether or not we have found that right balance in Bill C-3. It's an open question. Uh, the effective paragraph in the bill says, quote, no person is guilty of an offense under the relevant subsection by reason only that they attend at or near or approach a place or refer to in that subsection for the purpose of obtaining or communicating information. So we're allowed to have information pickets. I agree with that. I think everybody in this house is going to agree with that. The right of protest does not extend to interfering with the proper functioning of uh, society. Madam Speaker, how much time do I have left? I'm sorry. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna just pivot over to something that was in the conservative uh, platform in the last election. And reference has been made to it by several of the previous conservative speakers. We are proposing to introduce a critical infrastructure protection act. Now that was to prevent protesters from interfering with infrastructure projects, whether they're hospital construction or transit construction or pipeline construction. Yes, we have a right to protest. No, we do not have a right to interfere uh, with, uh, with legal projects, which Canadians have determined are essential for our society. So I'm very pleased that we're introducing this Bill C-3 because not only will it protect healthcare workers, it'll also set a good precedent for us going forward. And uh, I look forward to an opportunity at some point to introduce something like uh, what the Conservatives were pro proposing, a Critical Infrastructure Protection Act. And the work that uh, this committee is going to do, that Parliament is doing right now, uh, around C3, I think is going to be precedent setting uh, for legislation going forward that is going to regulate how protesting is to be done. Peaceful protesting, yes. Getting in the way of society's functioning, no. Thank you, Madam Speaker.